Hi, AP Calc AB students. Taking a look at example eight as we wind down this very long topic of 6.9, which is really our only advanced integration technique lesson that we're going to really learn um, throughout this unit six. Although there's a couple of things coming on the horizon with 6.10, so we're not quite done yet, but we're getting pretty close here. And what we're going to do here, it's a method that's sometimes referred to as the change of variable method. And I don't mean to cry when I say change of variable method. Um, it was really the only Bitmoji that was available. But really what we're doing here is we're using U substitution with just a bit of a twist. So let's take a look and you'll see what I mean. So for our example, we have a slightly different type of integration sub problem. We have the integration of x times the square root of 2x minus 1 with respect to x. Now, although it has this u substitution that we're going to use, there's a bit of a problem while we try to incorporate it. And I hope that you can see that as we move through. And as I said before, a lot of textbooks refer to this as like a change of variable method. So first thing that we're going to do we're going to identify the fact that our u is going to be 2x minus 1. It's typically the quantity that's located in parentheses. These square root symbols act as parentheses because we have a half power around this binomial. And then we're, of course, going to take the derivative of that u, which is going to be 2 with respect to x. But therein lies the problem. As you can see, that in our integral, we have an x that we have to account for. And there is no x hanging out in our du expression, and that's a bad, bad thing. But sometimes not all is lost. There is a way that you can account for this. And if you watch the video covering example 7 with the integration technique that begets the arc secant form, it's the same process. And what that process requires is that you solve this u equation for your x. So I'm going to add 1 over to the other side. I just decided to write the 2x first. And then I'll divide both sides by 2. And I have x is u plus 1 over 2. Now that is vitally important. Because what's going to happen is that, yes, we're going to also use the fact that dx is du over 2. The stage is now going to be set to rewrite this integral replace the x with u plus 1 over 2. Know that the u is still 2x minus 1, so under a radical, that's u to the half. And then this dx is now du over 2. And what you have now is something that you can integrate. Now, of course, you're going to have to bring the 1 fourth in front. And you're going to want to distribute this u to the half inside of this binomial as you normally would. And that, of course, gives you u to the 3 halves plus u to the 1 half du. Now when we integrate, 1 fourth sits and waits patiently. The u to the 3 halves will become, let's save some space here. I always like to save a little space. Add 1 to my exponent. Let's get this right here add 1 to my exponent to get 5 halves. And then instead of dividing by 5 halves, remember how we talked, you could just multiply by the reciprocal 2 fifths. And you'll do the same thing here. Add 1 to the 1 half to get 3 halves. Flip the 3 halves upside down to get your 2 thirds. And then don't forget your plus c. Now, Technically, we're finished. Now, you can make all sorts of decisions. Do you distribute the 1 fourth in? You could. Do you factor out a 2? You could. You could do all sorts of things like that, but you don't really have to. What you've got to do is back substitute. So you're going to replace the u's with our 2x minus 1. So when you do that, you end up with 1 fourth quantity 2 fifths times 2x minus 1 to the 5 halves. Whoops, can't write my 2 for some reason. And then we're going to add 2 thirds. And then we're going to replace u with 2x minus 1 yet again. And now we raise him to the 3 halves. And then we close off our plus c. And that takes care of example 
8a without any complex simplification. Now we're going to do the same thing for part b. Your u substitution is going to be the value that's inside of the square root, x plus 4. Now the derivative of that u is pretty chill, right? It's just 1. That means du is equal to dx. So that's a good thing. But again, what's bothering us is the fact that we don't have any means by which to account for this 2x plus 1. It's not absorbed into our du, in other words. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to solve this for x, which in this case is going to be u minus 4. And then we can start to replace our variables. So let's see what we've got. We've got the integration of, instead of 2 times x, we're going to say 2 times u minus 4 plus 1. And all that's divided by the square root of u, or you could say u to the half if you'd like. And then the cool thing about this problem is that the du and the dx are interchangeable. Just easily swap them out, and there you go. Now that doesn't look like it's very integration friendly. Well, we got a little bit more simplifying to do. So we could do a couple of different things. I'd say let's go ahead and just distribute this 2 in in the top. So that would give us 2u minus 8. But if I add that 1, I really would have a 2u minus 7. Then I'm going to divide by u to the half. Now when I said we could do a couple of things, we could also bring that u to the half up on top as a negative half. And I'm going to go ahead and show you that method because I didn't really get a chance to do that in a previous video. I used division instead of multiplication as my sole means of simplifying. So just to show you that this is a, a possibility, you could have something like this. u to the negative half multiplied through, you would have 2u to the positive 3 halves, and then minus 7, u to the negative 1 half, du. And now we are all set to let the integration magic happen. So the 2 drops out in front. The u to the 3 halves will raise its power up to the 5 halves. I'll dis decide to multiply by 2 fifths. And then I subtract 7. Same thing. Add 1 to negative 1 half. Multiply by the reciprocal of the 1 half, which is 2. There I go. And really the only thing left to do is just cosmetically combine some things and then back substitute x plus 4 is your value of u. And here you go. Honestly, this method isn't all that different from the normal u substitution. In fact, you could have performed u substitution exactly like this. Um, and I almost did. It's just that these problems have that slight little twi twist to them. And the key point in that twist is right here. You have to solve for x in your u equation and substitute that in. And you're actually, well, believe it or not, you're changing the variable. You're rewriting the problem so that it no longer is in terms of x, but it's now in terms of u. Anyway, I hope this helps. We don't have much more left to wrap up 6.9. Make sure you tune into those videos, and we'll see you next time.